Hello and welcome back. Okay, so in the last video on the ALU, we added all of the arithmetic operations. And in this one, I would like to add the logic operations. So we've got four logic operations that we've said we'd like to include in the build. We've got AND, OR, EXCLUSIVE OR, and NOT. And so let's get on and do those. Firstly, I'm going to take the ALU operation select back over to these wires. So the next free one is 10. So let's set, select that. OK, AND. So carry select is going to be 0 for all of these logic operations. Left hand side, that's going to be value 3 because we want to generate a 0. And then we only want the topmost bit of the right hand side selected. OK, that's good. Rather than switch back and forth to the PC, I'm going to do all of the control lines and then do all of the updates on the PC. OK, or once again, our carry select is none. Our left hand side select is going to be free, designating a zero. But this time, the RHS select, we set the top three bits. So or between these two values is going to essentially be the same as this one. Oh, I put these in the wrong row. Pay attention to the lights coming on here. This value order with itself is going to be the same, but we can test it properly when we write some instructions. Okay, now exclusive all. Okay, now exclusive all is ALU function 12. I'll just set that on the hardwired input. Now, same as all the others. Our carry select is 0 and LHS select is 3, designating a 0. Now, exclusive OR, if you look at the bit pattern for the AND and for the OR, you'll see the uh, exclusive OR is kind of similar but different to both of those in that we have the middle two bits set and that top bit that was set for the OR and for the AND becomes a zero. If you haven't seen video 34 in this series, I would recommend you go and have a look at that to understand what I'm doing here. Because these bottom four bits of the ALU control are effectively setting the truth table for the logical operation we're performing. Our number exclusive order of itself is going to be zero. OK, and finally, we want to do a NOT. Now, this ignores the right-hand side input. We're only interested in the left-hand side input. So obviously, here we see the NOT immediately. And then that's what we get on the output when we clock it. There's actually one other operation I would like to add to the ALU. We've done all of the arithmetic and all of the logical operations we originally planned, but I would like to add operation 14. And this doesn't actually produce an arithmetic result. It doesn't produce a, a value back onto the bus, but I would like to add a operation to clear the carry flags. Because the carry flags are basically internal persistent state and they get stored in this latch here. And having an instruction that can clear those flags will allow us to write a sequence of operations that puts everything into a fixed and known state. Now, obviously, we could do that by loading known values and into the registers and then performing operations on the ALU that would uh, produce a, a known result, but a, a sing, simple instruction that can just clear the carry flags before we execute some code that assumes they're zero would be good. And the operation for that is very, very simple. We leave the carry select as it is. 
left hand side to select is both bits set free which designates a zero input and then right hand side select will leave as all zeros so what we're basically doing here is asking the ALU to add zero to itself okay let's have a look at uh, adding those operations back into code okay firstly we got the architecture file this defines our instruction opcodes Now, there are operations to do inside the ALU other than the simple arithmetic and logic operations that we're encoding directly into instructions. Now, compare is one of those. So we should add instructions for that. Now, I'd also like to add a simpler operation to test if a value is zero. And once again, we're not actually adding an operation for this because we can test if a value is zero just by anding it with itself, but not storing the result anywhere. The compare operation is, of course, a subtract. Now we've still got a few spaces left in our instruction space. So I think I would like to add the four additional operations of exclusive ORing a register with itself. This is something that I write in code fairly often actually. The end result of this is to set a value to zero. But of course, in the assembly language we've got here, that's a single cycle operation because it takes one byte, whereas loading an immediate to set a value to zero will uh, wipe out the bus and effectively cause the instruction to take two cycles. So it saves both time and instruction memory. Okay, so we've done those. I'm going to put them with the other exclusive ORs. I may renumber all of these at some point. And we've still got space for a few more operations. I've got a couple of ideas of additional encodings we could add using the existing ALU functionality. But, oh, I forgot the clear carry. Okay, so now we need to add that to the control. Let's write some sample code first. Okay, I think that will look reasonably interesting. I haven't used an and, but I know what I can do. All right, now I need to update the control. Okay, here's our new operations, our new instruction permutations. I like how this section of the control bit enum is becoming just like a clean list of our ALU ops. So we added and or XOR not and clear carry. We actually have one unused row in the ALU control. Maybe we'll think of something for that. And we've got the four extra permutations of this, which are 
registers with themselves. Now for the compare, we can start off with the sub. The ALU op subtract is what we want, but this little definition we've got here isn't what we want. Now, this was just a shortcut, so it's LHS and load A. So we assert the appropriate register to the left-hand side bus, but we're also saying load that one and assert the ALU to the bus. And that's not what we want. What we just want is the LHS selection. So that was a, a nice handy shortcut for us in all of these previous cases, but it's not what we want here. So the test for zero is going to be similar, but we're using the AND operation. And then we're just putting the register into both the left and right inputs. Last but not least, we've got our clear carry operation. And we're just selecting the clear carry operation and nothing else. I to have copied that chunk in twice. And most likely, I assume, is I copied it to make modifications and uh, copied it one more time than intended. I could add some logic to my assembler to pick up on errors like that. Ah, look at that. I've duplicated these values. All right, I just really need to renumber all of these. Okay, let's get that onto the ROMs. I've actually just realized I've done a move A comma zero, but I could have done an XOR a comma A to achieve the same result. Now we're going to copy that down to the other registers, but they've all initialized empty, so it's not going to make any difference. And there's the increment A. So now we're going to do a shift left A, shift right B. So the B won't, we won't see anything, but we'll obviously see this LED gradually move up. Shift right doesn't have a visual change. Then we're going to OR C comma A. So we should see the second bit here light up. And then XOR D comma B, which isn't going to do anything because there's no bit set here or here. So then we repeat the shift. So as we all the contents of this register into this one, we will see everything but the first bit light up. And then into the D register, we're XORing B. So as this bit scrolls off the end here and comes on here because of our shift, we should start to see a similar operation over here. Okay, I'm not sure what that flash was. Okay, I'll investigate that in a moment. Okay, so that's having the effect I was expecting. So then as the bit goes back up, we're exclusive oring in and inverting these. And 
finally we should see that bottom bit in C get set. I know what that is. Okay, I'm not going to attempt to explain that in this video, but this is actually an occurrence of an issue that I've been expecting to crop up at some point, and so I will devote a bit of time in the next video to explaining that and looking at how we can resolve it. Okay, but the operations we've actually added are working completely fine. The new functionality in the ALU here is, is all working right. So I'm very pleased with that, and uh, yeah, that's great progress. So now we have 166 instruction permutations out of uh, a total of 256 we've got space for. So well over halfway. Let's uh, hope things continue smoothly. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.